Greetings. I was talking about apples the other day on a video here in Hawaii. And uh, it's hard to imagine a sillier idea than trying to grow apples in lower elevation in Hawaii. Uh, nevertheless, I seem to be having some success with it. A few things struck me, though, after I turned the video off. Uh, one was that any time you have a crop that's really very much out of place in an area, there's a good possibility, if you can get it to grow there, that the things that prey on the crop do not exist in that environment. Uh, an example would be the banana, for instance, in uh, Central California, the Bay Area, California. Um, I never had a single pest get on a banana the whole time I was there except for uh, a rat. A rat wanted to eat the fruit. Other than that, I never saw anything pester a banana, yet here we have a few things. Root weevils that get in there, bore the corms out. We have the, uh, the bunchy top here and other issues, aphids that get on bananas, you know. But when it comes to the apple here behind me in Hawaii, most of the big problems that hit apples in the mainland don't exist here. And so if you can manage to find apple trees that will fruit within the environment, that is, trees that are low chill enough, that don't need to be very cold in the winter, um, there are a number of them. Anna, uh, Gordon, Dorset, Golden, Einschemer, these are all low chill apples. There are others too. Um, all of them worthwhile for trialing here uh, in middle to upper elevations in Hawaii. I don't have... The codling moth here, which if you live in the mainland and you raise apples and pears, you know about that, that, that thing. That's the worm in your apple, okay? We don't have them. They're a terrible problem on the mainland. Uh, we do not have fire blight here. Fire blight is a terrible bacterial infection that nails apples, kills the trees, kills uh, nails pears too. Uh, and uh, we don't have it here. Uh, and the third bugaboo is the woolly apple aphid that will even get down on the roots underground and feed on them and create galls and really mess the trees up. We don't have them here either. And so actually all of the major pests that I faced in the mainland while growing apples, I don't have them. And so provided I can keep the Chinese rose beetles from chewing up the leaves on this thing, and I can find an apple tree that will actually bear within this climate it's free lunch. Right now I haven't got any diseases or pests that attack the trees. They're actually a very easy subject. Uh, same would go with pears. Um, I, I can't speak for plums, uh, but by the way, the Paradise Plant Nursery in Hilo, right now is when they have the bare root fruit trees brought in from California. And so you can go find apples, peaches, pears, plums, all that stuff right now. Uh, is over there in Hilo at Paradise Plants. Well, since I'm mentioning plant sales before I forget, the, uh, the buy-in sale, that is the um, <laughs> Big Island Association of Nursery buy-in sale, um, is happening on the 28th. Uh, it starts at 5 p.m. It's at the park at uh, Edith, Edith Kanaka Oli uh, Stadium. Uh, I, I, I do this thing every year. It's, it's usually always on my YouTube channel, but I'm usually walking around with my camera at the sale. So this year I thought I'd warn everybody ahead of time who really wanted to get to that sale, you still have time. It will be going on on uh, the Saturday uh, the 29th and Friday the 28th. Um, get there early. And stuff wipes out fast. I showed up right at opening on Friday last year. They were already hauling everything away out the door. A lot of cool stuff. Okay, a lot of cool stuff. Stuff you uh, may never see again or are very hard to find. Uh, shows up over there. All sorts of stuff. Yeah, and so back to the original subject of the video, though. And that's uh, trying to raise plants out of what is generally considered to be their natural growing conditions. Um, you know, if you can manage, say, with certain varieties of something, like in California, there were only so many bananas that would actually fruit for me in Fremont. But the ones that would, would do the job just fine, you know, and so they became a, uh, a typical part of my orchard. Uh, 
here in Hawaii, it's kind of the reverse. I have planted blackberries, blueberries, and apples here. Okay, and uh, I'm doing really well with blackberries. I'm doing pretty good with apples. I would be doing pretty good with blueberries, except the raiding birds have just driven me insane. They go right through the nets I put up and everything, and so I don't know what I'm going to do about the birds. But the plants do make berries for me, uh, for the birds, that is. Yeah, so there's always a possibility here, you know, that when you get a crop that is not ordinarily raised in a certain region, you may not have any of the pests or diseases that will associate to that crop. So at least until something shows up, it can be free lunch. And I am just realizing now that I mess around with a lot of my crops here to keep things going, but... I haven't had to do much anything to my apples. I prune them a little, feed them a little, uh, and that's about it. Uh, because other than those rose beetles chewing up leaves, and that I can prevent by using solar Christmas tree lights. If anybody out there is being plagued by the Chinese rose beetle here, you know, they'll eat your Hong Kong orchid trees, they'll eat rose bushes if you happen to have some, they eat apples, they'll eat pears, they eat my persimmons up. They love to gobble my persimmons, you know. And you never see them. They're at night. They're a nocturnal creature. Well, if you hang lights in the affected plant uh, that go on at dark, they ca the bugs can't feed if there's light for two hours after dark. And so they get confused. They go somewhere else to eat. And so a string of LED solar Christmas tree lights is a real good uh, prevention there. Boy, if it was only so easy to get rid of the coddling moth of the fire blight on apples in the mainland, eh, it isn't. Uh, it isn't. Uh, those of you who raise apples know these problems, and that can be quite daunting. But they never stop me from raising apples in California, and I guess nothing but the grave will ever stop me from raising apples. I had to give up on pawpaws. They will not work here. <laughs> but apples... So anyway, consider uh, the possibility that when you're messing with things, sometimes I say, oh, you know, well, that's space station gardening or something. But, you know, if you have to put too much effort to it, I don't really see how that it's worthwhile. But like in the case of these apples, uh, the apples are naturally genetically low chill, uh, these varieties. And so, you know, they should be able to work out around here with very little attention from me. And so that's a good thing. Consider these thoughts. Uh, and don't forget, if you want to try apples here on the Big Island, especially if you live up in Volcano and places like that, um, they got them in Hilo right now. Run on down. I highly recommend planting some uh, low-chill apples. I definitely do not miss planting Japanese persimmons here. They are m more reliable. Um, you know, probably from about 500 feet up to about 6,000 feet here on the island, uh, Fuyu persimmon will do just fine. Um, so, well, again, they get the rose beetle issue, but uh, the plants grow. I love them. My, uh, uh, <laughs> I can't live without my Japanese persimmons. I think they're really good. So, there's the thought of the day. Aloha. Hang loose. <laughs>